Welcome back. You're still watching Smart Money. So we are chatting with Gautam Dugard. He's the head research institutional equities at Motilal Oswal Financial Services, and he's talking about all the big triggers that you need to watch out for from here on. The markets are in a great place. We ended the week on a high, but uh, let's talk about banks, right? Before the break, we were chatting about that. This has been one of the tough quarters for the banking sector, and HDFC Bank has just is just refusing to perform. What do you do at a time like this, Gautam? So Sonia, as far as we are concerned, for last two years we've been. Uh, significantly overweight on PSU banks, and one of the reason for that was there was a lot of leeway for credit costs to uh, improve, and at the same time valuations were extremely cheap. Two years hence, earnings have gone up 2x, 3x, 4x for PSU banks, and they're still trading at 1.2x. Right? SBI, we just wrote a note two days back, it's yeah. still at 1.2x. Our overweight stance on PSU banks so far has been vindicated. And it looks like, as far as the next foreseeable three, four quarters are concerned, you're talking about 13, 14% credit growth for the system. Uh, while credit cost best is in the price, but you're not seeing worsening or meaningful worsening of trends in any segments. Mm. Right? So PSU banks today are delivering 18 to 20% ROEs. Last time they did this was 15, 17 years back. Mm. And that also happened for one or two years. Here, already two years, you have seen 13, 14% ROE. This year, they will be doing 17, 18 to 20%. And we are expecting that to continue at least for FY25 and 26. Mm. So we still believe that PSU banks have a room to outperform private banks. As far as private banks are concerned, as far as our model portfolio is concerned, we are overweight on ICICI Bank and Access Bank. While we've kept uh, HDFC Bank slightly underweight for some time now because of the, uh, you know, the underlying merger and some uncertainty as to how the NIMs will pan out, how the deposit growth will pan out. But let me tell you, HDFC Bank today is trading at 1.7, 1.8 times. Mm. This is a bank which four years back used to trade at 4x. So, you know, near term, nobody can predict. But a franchise like HDFC Bank trading at 1.8x and still doing 17, 18% ROE, fundamentally, you would go and buy it. Unless you have a very short term view. Short term, you cannot predict. Uh, you know, maybe a quarter or two, you will still... So you're still... saying this is a good time to buy HDFC I would bank. definitely feel so, given the valuations at which it is trading at and uh, given the negativity which a lot of the street has built on in this name. Okay. As far as our portfolio is concerned, we are still uh, heavily tilted towards PSU banks and NBFCs within the financials. As far as this quarter is concerned, earnings numbers were quite strong. Mm. We were expecting a flattish earnings for PSU banks. We got almost 22% growth. And for private banks also, we got about 22-23% growth, which was in line, right? Yes, but aside of earnings, there are a lot of things which people are bothered about in banking sector, which is the liquidity and the cost. Uh, it is, uh, you know, uh, accruing on the balance sheet for the banks because the credit deposit ratios are elevated for many of the banks. So how do they grow, mm. right, without impacting the margin? So that is one thing which is uppermost in the minds of investors. So, so that it, is what is keeping people slightly on tenterhooks and, and it's been an underperformer for some time now. Okay, it's interesting you say that this is a good time to be looking at HDFC Bank considering the underperformance. But what are the other stocks that you would prefer now? Post earning season, what stands out for you as buys and what would you avoid? So, uh, Sonia, yeah, if you look at uh, the kind of revisions we had done a month and a half back in our model portfolio, we have adopted a very diversified approach. So we have a lot of PSU names also. Uh, SBI and Bob, we've already spoken about. We had added HPCL, we had added Gale, we had added Coal India, which incidentally is also part of our top CY24 ideas. Their numbers have been phenomenal. And of course, the entire PSU rally, some of these stocks have also done well. As far as we are concerned, we are still overweight on NBFC, uh, PSU banks, industrials. We have a big overweight on real estate and then consumer discretionary. Mm. Uh, within consumer discretionary, we own almost seven stocks, while in staples, we have just one stock. Mm. So total eight consumption stocks, but seven are discretionary, within which we have names from jewelry, hotels, uh, Zomato, DMART, you know, uh, Metro and all. And then we are neutralish on pharma, uh, energy, and underweight on IT and metals. So that's how we've constructed our portfolio, but more, uh, you know, tilted towards domestic cyclicals, and of course, we are also selectively playing uh, the recovery plays in IT and consumption. 
Okay, and uh, you want to just take us through what is your overall view on India? I'm asking because, you know, it has been a volatile stretch, right, the last couple of weeks. And now anyone and everyone is bullish on the market. And that's generally when you start to get a little bit of a corrective phase in the market, uh, when this euphoria kicks in. Uh, what is your view? What is the best way to approach the markets now? So I think, uh, Sonia, there is no euphoria in large caps. If you look at Nifty today, even at 22,000, we are talking about 19 and a half to 20 times one year forward earnings, mm -hmm. which is well in line with the long period average. The 10 year average price to earning ratio of Nifty is 20 times. We are at 20 times. So in Nifty, I don't see any euphoria. Do remember that the new highs or the new index highs, whatever you want to call it, a new market cap, are driven by the corporate earnings. Mm -hmm. Four years back, Nifty earnings were about 3.5 or 3.4 lakh crore. We're ending FY24 at 7.6 lakh crores. So it's almost a 22% earning CAGR for last four years. Mm -hmm. If you look at our broader coverage universe, our profit pool used to be 4 lakh crores in FY20. We are ending FY24 at about 11 lakh crores. So that's a 27% CAGR. So while markets are at a new high, corporate profits are also at a new high. Yes, some segments of the market definitely look overextended, especially the mid-cap index, where the valuations today are at a 40% premium to Nifty. If Nifty is trading at 20 times, Nifty mid-cap index is trading at almost 28 times. So you have to be very selective there, do your homework, take a very bottoms-up view. But overall, India, like I said in the beginning, we are enjoying the best of both the macros and micros. Very rarely you see this confluence happening. And the fact that investors are disenchanted with China, we obviously tend to be a collateral beneficiary of that. Also and now Japan has gone into a recession. Yeah, but Japan as a market has done really well in the trailing 12 months. Mm. But look at the weight of India. Mm. It's almost gone from 7-8% to almost 18-19% now in MSCI. Correct. While China's weight has halved in that mm. same period. So I think unless we you know, uh, see a situation where something goes wrong at a macro level, whether it's elections or whether it is rate or inflation, or you see sudden slowdown in earnings, I think we should chug along well, at least compound in line with earnings. Mm -hmm. Our expectations for earnings next two years is about 15 to 16% CAGR after the last four years CAGR of 22%. Mm -hmm. So even if you build in some amount of derating, you're still talking about a 12-13% compounding for index like Nifty, which is not a bad situation to be in after having already met 22% compounding. Mm, okay, well, that's a very strong case being made for the market to move higher. But we've run out of time. We would have loved to chat some more. Gautam, thank you so much for thank joining you. us and making it to this special episode of Smart Money. With that, it's a wrap on Smart Money. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a great weekend.